Louisville City Council has called a charter amendment election to be held Saturday, May 1st, 2021, so voters can decide on four propositions dealing with potential governance changes. Voters will be able to vote yes or no on each proposition. A majority of yes votes is required for a proposition to pass. The May 1 ballot also includes the mayor and two city council positions. Proposition A. Should the charter be amended to provide that if, prior to January 1, 2023, the city makes an annexation that increases the geographic size of the city by at least 8%, the size of the city council would be increased from a mayor and five council members to a mayor and six council members, and the number required to constitute a quorum and to transact business will be increased to reflect the addition of one council member? Under this proposition, the City Council would be increased to six members plus the Mayor if the planned annexation of Castle Hills takes place before Jan 1, 2023. The Mayor would still vote only to break a tie. The number of members who would have to be present to conduct business, the quorum, would increase from three to four. Louisville City Council has consisted of five members plus the Mayor since Municipal Incorporation in 1925. With a current population of about 105,000 and a population of about 120,000 after annexation, the ratio of council members to residents would remain similar. The six city council seats would be assigned to residential districts as approved by voters in 2017. Candidates would have to live within the designated district, but all positions would still be voted on at large by all eligible voters. The change in council size would not take effect until future annexations added at least 8% to the city's total land mass. This is most likely to be if and when the Castle Hills development is annexed into Louisville. This currently is planned for December 2021. There would be no change made if annexation were not completed by Jan 1, 2023. Castle Hills voters will not be eligible to vote in Louisville elections until after annexation, so not until May 2021 if the proposed annexation schedule holds. Proposition B. Should the charter be amended to eliminate provisions related to the budget process that are covered by or are inconsistent with state law? If a provision of the city charter differs from Texas law, the state law requirements supersede the charter. This can happen over time as new state laws are adopted. Multiple changes to state law, including several during the 2019 legislative session, create requirements for the city's budget process that are different from requirements of the city charter. This proposition would remove or amend charter provisions that are covered by or are inconsistent with state law in order to reduce any possible confusion. Specific changes to the city charter would include Section 9.02, Preparation and Submission of Budget, removing the required time window for the city manager to submit a proposed budget to the city council. This timeline is now addressed in state law. Section 9.06, Notice of Public Hearing on Budget, removing the required timing for giving notice of a public hearing on the proposed budget. This is now addressed in state law. Specific changes to the city charter would include Section 9.07, Public Hearing on Budget, removing the required timing for holding a public hearing on the proposed budget. This is now addressed in state law. Section 9.11, Effective Date of Budget Certification, removing the requirement that printed copies of the budget be made available and adding language that requires the budget to be posted on the city's website. This is consistent with changes in state law. Proposition C. Should the charter be amended to eliminate the requirement that residents of the city who serve on the city planning commission own real property? The city charter currently requires that members of the planning and zoning commission own real property within the city, in addition to residency requirements. Residents are not required to own property in order to serve on any city council or city appointed board other than the Planning and Zoning Commission. This requirement means residents living in rental properties are not eligible to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Including apartments, more than half of Louisville's residential households are rental properties. This proposition would remove the requirement for a Planning and Zoning Commission member to own real property. Members still would be required to live in Louisville. The specific change to the city charter would be Section 8.04, Planning Commission Membership, removing the words and own real property therein. Proposition D, should the charter be amended to clarify the role of the city manager by deleting a provision giving the city council authority to administer city departments? The city charter assigns a list of 22 specific powers to the city council. The charter also creates a position of city manager to be appointed by the city council and serve as the chief administrator and executive officer of the city. 
This establishes a council manager form of government in which the elected city council sets a policy and approves the budget, while a professional city manager is hired by the city council to implement those policies and manage day-to-day -day operations. One power assigned to the City Council includes the ability to establish, create, consolidate, or abolish administrative departments, and distribute the work of divisions. Historically, the City Council has left that authority to the City Manager, who as Chief Administrator already has the authority to hire and supervise department directors. There is no record that this power has ever been exercised by the City Council since the City Charter was first adopted in 1963. This proposition would remove this City Council power, leaving the other 21 powers unchanged. The specific change to the City Charter would be Section 3.07, Powers of the City Council, removing Item B, which states, establish, create, consolidate, or abolish administrative departments and distribute the work of divisions. Early Voting Denton County, Fred Herring Recreation Center, 191 Civic Circle, Denton County Administration, 701 Kimberly Drive, Denton, or any designated early voting site in Denton County. Monday, April 19th, through Friday, April 23, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. Saturday, April 24th, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. Sunday, April 25th, 1 through 6 p.m. Monday, April 26th, through Tuesday, April 27th, 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. Early Voting Dallas County, Capel Town Center, 255 Parkway Boulevard, George L. Allen Senior Courts Building, 600 Commerce Street, Dallas, or any designated early voting site in Dallas County. Monday, April 19th through Friday, April 25th, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. Saturday, April 24th, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. Sunday, April 25th, 1 through 6 p.m. Monday, April 26th through Tuesday, April 27th, 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. Election Day, Saturday, May 1st, 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. Polling places are assigned by precinct. Fred Herring Recreation Center, 191 Civic Circle. Victorious Life Assembly of God, 2671 MacArthur Boulevard, Carrollton Public Library, 4220 North Josie Lane, Dallas County Vote Centers. If you have any questions about early voting or Election Day voting locations, please contact the City Secretary's Office at 972-219-3404.